All right, this video is only going to cover one thing. It's going to take the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. We're going to take all this information and we're going to create a sine function based off of it. So, how do you do this step by step? Step one, label the two easiest things to identify. What are the two easiest things to identify? Period and vertical. Not period, amplitude. Okay, amplitude and the vertical shift. Yes, the amplitude. What is our amplitude, Austin? Uh, plus or minus 15. All right, plus or minus 15. So it's going to put A is going to be either a plus or a minus A 15. What is our vertical shift? Negative 10. So we know that for sure. So those are the first two that are very easy to identify. Okay? Just remember, the absolute value of A is equal to the Amplitude. Okay, the absolute value of A is equal to the amplitude. So what I want you guys to do right now is we are going to focus on two things. The first thing we're going to focus on is what's called the period. Always start after you found A and B. Then focus on finding B. That's the second step right there. So the period, you're going to write two pi over b is equal to our particular period, which happens to be 4 pi. So put it as 4 pi over 1. No. What we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. Just remember, whenever you cross multiply, the cross products are always equal. When you're doing ratios and proportions, cross products are always equal. 2 pi times 1 is 2 pi. 4 pi times b becomes 4 pi times b. So I'm just going to put 4 pi times b. Now in order to solve for b, what we have to do is divide both sides by this value of 4 pi. This cancels out this. So now all we have left right here, all we have left is B. These pies cancel out. And what does two fourths reduce to? Mm -hmm. So that's what your B value is. Alright, so now we have this B value. This is going to be a very important value because now we have to move over to this concept called a phase shift. So the phase shift, there's a formula for phase shift, and it's called C over B. Now, our phase shift in this particular problem is pi over 2. So what I want you to do is I want you to write C over B equals pi over 2. Start it out just like that. All right, try not to freak out too much. But right here, for the value of B, I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in my value for B, which is a half. It's a fraction. It's not as false. What it is. So this is equal to what? Pi over 2. So once again, I'm going to take my cross products right here. Take my cross products. And what is 2 times C? And C times 2. That's going to be 2 times C. And this right here, it's kind of hard to see, this is a half, right? What is a half times a pi? What do we call a half times a pi? One half pi, or half a pi. Or you could call it pi over two. Pi over two. Okay. Now we'll go back to our elementary school teacher who taught us that whenever you wanted to solve, all right, when you deal with fractions, when you multiply this two by to get rid of it, you multiply it by its reciprocal, right? Which is in what? Uh, one over two. One over two. So one over two. And so this half and this 2, they cancel to a 1. So now you have C. Pi times 1 is pi. pi and 2 times 2 is 4. And voila, there we have our value for C. So before you finish your function, what do you have to find? You have to find A, which is easy, right? B, C, and the D value, which is also easy. So now we're going to take all of this and we're going to plug it in. So here we go, grand finale. I know. Try not to fall asleep. 
We're going to write it right underneath this one right here. So here we go. My final answer is y equals, you could put plus or a minus 15 times the sine. Now what was our b value? Our b value was a half. So instead of writing, instead of writing a half of theta, instead of writing a half of theta, I'm going to write theta over 2 minus my c value, which is pi over 4 plus my d value, which is a minus 10. So instead of saying plus a negative 10, I'm just going to write minus 10. So I'm going to box in right here. Box in. That's my final answer. And that's the step-by-step -step method of how to find your a, b, c, and d for every single sine and cosine function. If you are given your amplitude, your period, your phase shift, and your vertical shift.